And so this notion of, of Caesar as an outsider, as this, you know, not quite belonging to the world of ape or man, was, was, was really what, 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 what started off the journey for me. Let me ask you this, because I can see how, how liberating it would be to realise I can be anything, which, which is obviously a marvellous thing. Presumably there are some downsides to the technical challenges of, of motion capture, performance capture. I, you know, t tell us about how it works in relation to your relationship with other actors. And also, I mean, you mentioned you were up on the mountain at the beginning and then Peter Jackson said, no, we've got to go and do this properly, which puts you in a studio, in a motion capture studio, as opposed to interacting most of the time with the real world. How do you deal with, with those problems? And do you, do you find them problems anymore? Or are they just... Second nature now. No, no, I, I don't. I didn't ever find the problem because because I did shoot every single scene on location with those actors. Um, but no, I've never found that there's been any sort of um, anything that's in the way of working with any other actors. Because at the end of the day, when you're acting with someone, all you're doing is looking into their eyes, and it's the chemistry that happens between you. So it it doesn't matter. Um, at all that you're that I, you know I'm not wearing a costume and makeup, but and and that I'm wearing dots all over my face. I mean, other actors might for five minutes when they're looking at me think that, but actually that goes away after you know you just you just we are so used to using our imaginations. That's what we do. We transport ourselves into these characters and we believe the other actor, and it's the act of believing that other actor that enables you to 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 be to to be real and. Um, uh, and, and, and it's about that chemistry. So, so as long as you're looking into the eyes of a, of a great actor and you're working with them, it doesn't matter what you're wearing, quite frankly. Um, and and, and the, the technology evolved in, um, in that uh, over the years we, we took it out of, as you say, from, from inside a motion capture volume and being able to shoot on sets uh, and never having to go back and repeat it again. Um, with, the, with the addition of head-mounted cameras and being able to take all the motion capture cameras, put them out on locations, put them out on set. So during the course of uh, working on the Apes trilogy, for instance, um, that then, you know, we, 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 we literally took it further and further away from, from sets and out onto location. And, and then this last one, War for the Planet of the Apes, we were up to our waist in snow, um, you know, Terrible rain, uh, wind conditions, and and the the technology is so robust now that it that it stands up. I wanted to ask you about that because obviously the 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 interesting thing. I mean, with with Gollum and um, and Lord of the Rings, you were uh, it was a it was a brand new franchise. With uh, Planet of the Apes, it was a movie that was originally in the in the sixties, and you were you were picking up and rethinking the franchise, and in effect focusing on different aspects of of the story. How did you approach? creating Caesar, creating that character Caesar? I, I was sent the script for, for, this, for this film and it was, uh, having had already played King Kong, people said, well, why are you doing another ape? And uh, you're you not going to get typecast as apes then? You know, what, what's going on? Here? <laughs> and I'm like, I said, and, and I, I'd read the script and it was, it was the most amazing story um, of, this, of this being that, that grew up and... and thinking he was one thing, realizing he was another, becomes a revolutionary, leads his kind to freedom, um, you know, breaks, breaks the chains of bondage and, and uh, starts a new society. And it happened to be an ape, you know, it was just like, it was a brilliant character, the most incredible character, and also happened to be an ape. So that, that, that was the way I looked at it. And I approached Caesar really very much as a, as, a, as a human in an ape's skin because he was brought up with human beings and, and apes do, if they're brought up in captivity, re really do reflect human behavior a lot more. But he's not just an ape. He's not just a chimpanzee. He's a chimpanzee that has this Alzheimer's cure drug coursing through his veins, which is, uh, which is inadvertently, you know, the end of uh, humanity. It's causing, it has an adverse effect on, on, on human beings, but accelerates the evolution of these apes. So, so it's, it's, it was a really incredible journey of, and I based him on a real chimpanzee called Oliver, um, who was in the 1970s, he was known as the human Z. He was a, he was a bipedal ape who had facial expressions that were incredibly human. And um, and, and 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 so this notion of, of Caesar as an outsider, as this 
you know, not quite belonging to the world of ape or man was 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 really what 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 started off the journey for me. And and over the course of fil of the three films, uh, there were lots of different sources of inspiration. But but to start with, there was this there's this this orphaned chimpanzee who felt human, who then in his teenage realizes he almost sees his skin for the first time as he's cast out and considered aggressive, thrown into a sanctuary with other apes. But because he has this sort of a, he is this outsider uh, quality to him. He also has this empathy for not just chimpanzees, but for all different kinds of apes, and therefore became, the, the, became a leader because he's able to not see the difference in other. And, and so this, this great empathy um, is, is sort of, grow, you know, grows, grows with him. Um, can I ask you, can I jump in to ask about this? Because this is, uh, you had this extraordinary career going, and yet you decided to, to expand in a different way in terms of setting up your own production company, Imaginarium. Yeah. What, what was the object? What, what was your plan for, for Imaginarium? The, the visual arts kind of original background that I had, I'd always, always sort of hankered after story, story, telling stories from a visual perspective, um, not just inhabiting the, the, the characters. I mean, I buried my, myself into acting because I needed to do that. I really wanted to do that. But there was always this desire to, to also make and tell stories. So um, so I'd started to make short films, and uh, when I came back from making King Kong, I was asked to direct some performance capture for video games for, for, a, company called Heavenly, for a company called Ninja Theory, uh, and it was a game called Heavenly Sword. And this, this was like at a time when... You know, video games were beginning to become treated with, rather than just being sort of hack and slash kind of, you know, button button pressing, you know, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill you, you know, that. It, they become p the potential to be interactive movies with, with really good scripts and interesting characters and, and, and asking you as a player to be, um, to be, immersed in the sort of the moral compass of it all you know what you know the, the the journey that you were the journey of the character and scripts were becoming much more defined and 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 uh, yeah like in, in interactive movies and performance therefore became more important so i so i i was asked to direct the the uh, capture for um f f for this game and i cast it and uh with some great actors and we rehearsed it like a like a film or a play, and, and and in fact we ran the whole game as a play, and then I came to shoot it, and there wasn't anywhere in the UK that we could shoot it. The technology wasn't available, and which was ridiculous because actually the technology was built in Cambridge and the software was made in Oxford, and yet I ended up taking the entire production over to New Zealand, back to New Zealand, to to actually make it with Weta, the visual effects company that I'd been working with for a long time. And so I thought to myself, this is absolutely nuts. Why haven't we got somewhere in the UK that, that, that has this sort of facility? So I uh, went about thinking, well, how can we do this? I, I want to have a UK-based digital hub, a digital home, a sort of a theatre for the creation of furthering the art and craft of performance capture across lots of different medium. And that's when Jonathan and I met. Um, I, and, and I'd uh, had a film script that I wanted to develop and was talking to him, a traditional film script. Uh, 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 and we decided to, to pool our resources, bring his producerial skills and my desire to make this new kind of environment. Um, and we pooled them all together and formed, and formed the Imaginarium with the express idea of asking ourselves the question, how will stories be received in 10, 20, 30 years time? What will, will we all be doing? How will we, you know, will we be sitting watching a screen? Will we be immersed? Will we be, is it theater? Is it a combination of virtual reality and theater? And, uh, you know, how, how, you know, cause it's shifting, things are shifting. Of course, you know, this is all, this, since then, these, all, all these things have started to, to come into play. Nevertheless, you've, you've uh, your directorial debut, I would say, it, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's the film Breathe, which I think BAFTA will be showing in the next couple of weeks, which is coming out this weekend. It's an extraordinary film, I can, I can testify. But it's, it's very much more a traditional uh, form of experience about someone who is stricken with polio. W what was it that led you to say, this is the first movie I want to direct? 
I read Breathe, which was this extra extraordinary script by Bill Nicholson, who wrote Gladiator and Everest and Long Walk to Freedom, and um, and actually Elizabeth, I think, The Golden Age, I think he wrote that. Um, and it was the most powerful script I think I've, I've, I've read in my life as an actor or, or, or director. It was the most touching, uh, emotional piece of piece of writing, and and it was a true story. It's it's Jonathan's parents' story, and um, and I said I came in the next day and I said to Jonathan, look, um, I don't know how to tell you this. I know we've been looking for directors for this, and I know we're setting up to do Animal Farm and then all these other extraordinary futuristic things, but. I really would like to have a crack at, and I know I'm sort of used to directing orcs and elves and dwarves and, and, and all the thing, and things like that, but I really fancy having a crack at directing your parents' life story. What do you think? And, um, and he said, yeah, I think that's a great idea. I think that's a great idea. Let's do it. There was a period of um, where, a window of opportunity where we suddenly found that we could shoot Breathe. So, so um, Andrew Garfield and Claire Foy, who are the stars of the, the film, uh, became available, and uh, we jumped on it, and we raised the money for this film, Breathe, in seven weeks, and we shot it in seven weeks, and meanwhile, I was still uh, editing Jungle Book, so it was a really crazy kind of time earlier this year and, and last year, um, where two films were being made simultaneously. Um, but in actual fact, Breathe, because it was a much smaller production and um, it was no, had no visual effects in it whatsoever, well, a little bit, but not too much, um, was, is the thing that has become, inadvertently become my, my directorial debut and, uh, and Jungle Book will be sort of following on fairly soon. Do you feel pleased with Jungle Book? Has it? I mean, one of the interesting things about Jungle Book is the fact that you know it has been done before in various forms. Do you, and, and I imagine one of the challenges is how can I do this in a way which is not just technically original but also feels different. Well, ours is a, is very much um, a, a darker, a sort of, I would say, tonally closer to Rudyard Kipling's book. Um, and ours is a very much a Mowgli centric story. It's the story of an out, again an outsider, um, so a similar trajectory to Caesar in many ways. Actually, he 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 is brought up in the world of of animals and um, then realizes that that can't continue, and neither can he be part of the world of man. And so it's the film is very much about about his identity, his true identity, and 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 in being of both worlds, and actually. Uh, the, and, and, and creating his own identity, and um, and so and our jungle is you know is very much a place of an, 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 an idyll, but it's also a place of great savagery. And the laws of the jungle are you know very very fixed and firm, and ones that Mowgli at, at a certain point in his life can't adhere to anymore. So it's it's a it's a PG thirteen, slightly, slightly darker. As I say, very much centering on a great performance by a young uh, actor called Rohan Chand, uh, um, an American uh, Indian uh, actor who is quite quite incredible, and uh, and then these brilliant performances by um, by by, and it, it really feels like our one is very very much uh, it's like Dickens in the Jungle. Can you look ahead ten years to what you would like to be achieving? Yeah, I would very much like to, to be in a situation where a story can be told multi um, multi in a very multi-platform way, where you can, you can build the world of something that you see on stage. I'd like to, love to do a big stage production of something that also can live as a film and that the characters and the assets that you've built can translate and migrate between, between all these different platforms uh, so it can be, so the threads of the story can migrate through, through, through uh, different, you know, to, to, from virtual reality through to, through to, to theater, through to, you know, I, I, like to, I, like, I would like to think that there is a link between all of these. I think that's an adventure we all hope we can go <laughs> along with you on. And Andy Serkis, I'd like to thank you very much for all your insights during this fascinating event.